Judges, let's go and join Harry Fawcett, who's live with Anwar Ibrahim outside uh, the High Court in Kuala Lumpur. Harry, over to you. That's right, yes. You join us live here outside the, uh, the High Court in Kuala Lumpur with uh, the opposition leader, Anwar Ibrahim, and his family. And uh, Mr. Anwar Ibrahim, it must be a, a surprise the, uh, what, what's happened today. Everybody seemed to be expecting for a guilty verdict, not least yourself. Yes. Al Alhamdulillah, I mean, um, it is, it is uh, a surprise, but uh, we welcome the decision. I'm uh, vindicated from this scurrilous uh, smearing the character, my character, my family. Uh, notwithstanding, it is a uh, surprise to everyone here because the general perception is with evidence of the conduct of the judiciary has not been fair. But, um, well, we welcome the decision, which means we have uh, an agenda and we can move forward. Um, all along you've been saying this has been a, a political frame-up on the part of the government. The fact that you've been found not guilty, does that shatter that argument you've been making? Uh, no, to the contrary, the fact that I was charged for on a very flimsy sort of a case, I was the defense was called, key witnesses were not allowed to come in. And there was also this case, you see, because the facts uh, and evidence was demolished effectively. They cannot stand in any court of law. And the court of public opinion in Malaysia, we have distributed all the medical evidence other than notes of uh, evidence which the doctors until today has refused to give. Uh, some key witnesses have refused to appear. Now, how do you again conduct a criminal case against us? So, the, although it's trumped up political charge, they succeeded initially in smearing my character, but they could not stand in any court of law. And I must thank the international media, including Al Jazeera and all friends uh, in the West, in the East, uh, Europe, Turkey, and many friends in the region who have expressed to Prime Minister Najib and the government, make sure the process is fair, and Anwar must be acquitted based on the facts and the law. Okay, well, just to clarify, we've just been reporting the case. We haven't been making any of those sorts of appeals. But um, the, the, the government here has, the information ministry has today said that this should be taken as a vindication of the Malaysian justice system, that uh, people around should accept this verdict. Is that uh, a conciliatory message, do you think, or is that uh, the, the continuing line? Well, I, I, I um, accept if it is the men to ensure there are changes in the judicial process system. Uh, this cannot be a landmark case in the sense that they, 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 uh, to ensure a judicial independence. The public uh, pressure, public awareness of the issues is so compelling for anyone to just dismiss this. But uh, I, I, I recognize, I acknowledge the fact that it took some courage on the part of the judge to come up with such a although short decision, but um, I am at least vindicated in this. But to suggest, therefore, that the judiciary is independent, I think it remains to be seen. Because we have all too many evidences at the High Court, at the Court of Appeal, at the Federal Court that require major changes, systemic change in the judiciary. Look at the media. The media, as an opposition leader, I have not been given one minute of airtime. Um, You've been saying all along that, uh, that this has been a political frame-up. You've been uh, on a, essentially a farewell tour of your supporters, um, rallying them for the election coming up. Uh, what does this do to your election campaign? Uh, you were talking about business as usual, even if you'd been uh, found guilty. Presumably, what, what, what changes does this make, this, this acquittal? I sit consistently in all my messages throughout the country. I deserve an acquittal. But knowing the system, if I was sent to jail, I am prepared, however difficult it may be for me, Aziza and the family. So the message is actually showing the options available. But whether I'm outside or in jail, the demand, the clamor for reform, for democracy, for respect to human rights, not to continue with these racist slurs against minorities, must continue. We must continue to clamor for this change particularly the economic agenda, economic justice for all. I mean, there has been uh, some questioning the, 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 the solidity of your, of your coalition. Um, there are very different parties in it. There's a, a fairly conservative Islamist party. There's a fairly liberal uh, Democrat Action Party. Um, there are those who question that if it would it have been able to stay together had you been jailed. What's your, what's your view on that? We have made all the preparations uh, required. We have anticipated the decision. Option one, option two, option three. 
and the three parties, all the leaders were here in court to show solidarity. And uh, we have made uh, preparation. In the event I, am, uh, I was uh, sent to jail, then uh, what happened in the coalition? Who is going to preside and coordinate? Who will, uh, who is supposed to be the interim prime minister in the event we, we win the elections? All these things have been considered. And uh, thank God uh, we don't need to uh, choose those options, but to continue. And I think there's now upset of, of um, um, enthusiasm amongst our supporters that it is a, you know, a very important and critical victory. I'm free to continue with my work. Although I'm leaving for Bombay today with Raja Mohan Gandhi, the grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, for democratic reforms and to speak at the Prime Minister's office in Istanbul the day after. The last time I spoke to you was on the day that uh, it was found there was a case to answer for the defence. And you said essentially the judge had already found you guilty by saying that Mohammed Saifu was a, a credible witness. Um, again, this must have been a, a huge shock to, yes. to, to find him reverse that, what you said was a, a, already a decision. It's true. Because what was said by the judge, that uh, the complainant is not only credible, but truthful. When he said that, I said, there's no point of my calling for defence or speaking from... Uh, I mean, uh, or, or uh, taking uh, taking. So, so how do you account for today? Then? So now, I mean, of course, it's a shock. But then, what must be recognised is throughout the defence stage, we brought in experts, international experts, and demolished every single DNA or sperm or forensic evidence that there was. So, be, due to that, I think the judge has have a difficulty to defend his earlier position that uh, the complainant was truthful. And he did say that. He said, well, initially I agreed with the uh, complainant, but uh, it cannot be corroborated at all, uh, particularly in the issue of penetration or DNA evidence, and therefore he has no way but to acquit me. Okay. And so does your accusation still stand, uh, in the essence, that this was a political trial? Taken at that point in time, taken at the Trump up charges, taken uh, with the evidence adduced, the failure uh, to bring in key witnesses key evidence, notes of uh, examin medical examinations, what is it? How do you explain that if it is not political? In any court of law, you must allow witnesses to appear. In any court of law, notes of medical examinations by doctors must be produced. And in this case, it was not produced and we lost the case at every instance, even in the appellate court. Well, what will be political will be the next few months uh, with uh, an election coming up this year. So uh, for now, Anwar Ibrahim, thank you very much. Thank and uh, we'll hand you back to you in the studio in Doha. <laughs>